Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever because we are at the three month mark for this workshop here in Montana. And we've been setting up this workshop and cracking on as much as we can to get this workshop ready to build some things. We're already in the middle of a fantastic project, the Cavalry Sabre, which is such a blast. And I want this to be our mile marker. What did this workshop look like? three months in, because it still has a lot to go, but a lot has happened. So let me run you through it all. First thing is the forging equipment, and the two key pieces of machinery to really, really look at here are, of course, this 165 pound Anyang pneumatic power hammer. I got this from James Johnson of Anyang USA. Be sure that if you buy an Anyang power hammer, you let him know I sent you, I get a little kickback. He has just phenomenal customer service. This is a beast of a machine. It's 6,000 pounds of cast iron, and uh, it's, it's really been quite fun to use and get to know how to use after having run the Pilkington for the last few years. To the left, this is a 25 ton hydraulic press. So this is gonna squeeze as opposed to hit. You'll have seen in a recent episode, I built this little hammer cart right here because one of the interesting things here about this new workshop is it's not just my tools. We've also got Will's tools here and my tools already took up a lot of space and now that we have Will's tools on it too, we've just got so many tools taking so much space, we needed more organization. Over here on the left, this is Will's Fairbanks power hammer. That it is, it is a 1918 Fairbanks a uh, mechanical power hammer. So it doesn't run off air like that one does. It's all mechanically driven. driven. Yep. Same person. There it is. Uh, I'm planning on selling it. So the ram weight is pretty much the exact same as the anging that we have. I think it's gonna be a little bit better. I'm gonna find something smaller, probably around a 100 pound ram or so. So that's the plan right now. Gonna either sell it as is or fix it up and then sell it. This is one of your anvils also. This is a 1917 Acme Trenton, so it was sold through the Sears catalog. Oh, that's cool. Which is pretty cool. Back in the day, you could just walk into Sears, pick yourself up an anvil, pretty handy. Ah, oh, the good old days. Exactly. Now you gotta go on your phone and use the internet to buy an anvil. Ugh, like a peasant, I know, <laughs> ridiculous. Terrible. None of these anvils or vices are bolted down. This isn't the forge that we're gonna be using. Stay tuned. We already have the materials and supplies. We've got a ribbon burner on the way and we're gonna be building a beast of a forge, huge monster forge, four times the size of this one. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a big forge and it's gonna be on casters too because we love casters now. As we move over this way, you'll see that the right of the power hammer, we have welding screens and this is part of the fact that we have now multiple people. It's not just me, it's Will, working on things at the same time. This is the oxypropane set we have. Why did I go with oxypropane? It's because in the UK, I used oxypropane. It's what I have used um, since I first ever did any oxy fuel work, and I never anticipated needing to weld with an oxy fuel set. So I got oxypropane cutting and heating set because the propane is cheaper, and provided you dial it all in right and you do it right, I don't think there's meant to be any difference in the performance of heating and the performance of cutting with the propane as opposed to the acetylene. I know a lot of you guys have asked about that. This here is something that I absolutely love. This is a welding fume extractor. So all this welding equipment, all the red stuff is Lincoln Electric welding equipment that they very kindly sent us and is just a pleasure to use so far. It also really helps with uh, hair styling. Oh, another big, big plus. Would you like to demonstrate, Will? Look at that. Fantastic hair styling as well as a fume extractor. All in one. All in one. Now, of course, you saw our welder cart build. The welder cart is also on casters and features a precision TIG right here, a 1,000 Tomahawk plasma cutter up top, and a 260 power MIG from Lincoln here at the bottom. At the back, we have argon for the TIG welder, 90% argon, 10% carbon dioxide for the MIG welder. You'll remember we built this welding table right here. Also now, on casters. Also on, everything's on wheels. We were a lot worse at fabricating <laughs> when we built this. We didn't have a single fireball tool square. It was an absolute Exactly, mess. now we've got like 100 fireball tool squares, so we're way better fabricators. You know, you know what they say, it's the tool that makes the craftsman. That is, not what they say, but in this case, we'll say it. 
because we like the Fireball Tool Square. Use code FORGE, get yourself a discount, we get a kickback too. This is a two foot by four foot rhino cart from Stronghand Tools. They sent it to us. I've been trying it out on some of the last couple of fabrication projects and it is just fabulous to use. And it's also on casters. I like that here I can go from the table to the tool cart where I store lots of the tools that we use at the welding table just by turning around. This is so much more space efficient than we've had it in the past. I like this. On the note of the tool cart, what we have done is we've created a system here in the workshop and like put a lot of time into making a system for organizing things here effectively so that anybody can tidy up. Hey, how's it going? I'm Scott. How you doing? I'm Will. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. You're Alec? Yeah, absolutely. Great to meet you, Scott. So Scott is the new intern here and basically as an intern, all he's going to be doing is cleaning the whole time. Can you read colors? Uh, I guess. Well, all right. Our uh, organizational setup here is that we've got different toolboxes with different color grades. So we've got the white toolbox, we've got the blue toolbox, the red toolbox, and the green toolbox. So each of these goes in one of those toolboxes. Okay, here we go. I, get to it. Get to it. Uh, okay. I guess that goes in there. Oh, hey, bonus thing. How'd I do, boss man? It, it was okay, but uh, you can go now, Scott. Just go? Okay. Well, that's a... Pretty good proof of concept, regardless. Pretty much, yeah. If uh, Scott can do it, anybody can do it. That's right. Anyway, let's uh, crack on with the video. Over here, you'll see we now have two drill presses. We had this drill press over on the other side of the workshop. It's now here. So that all the drilling's contained in one area. I think it's making sense. Here's a steel storage. This has evolved a little bit since you've seen it, but there's still more work needing to be done. We need to focus on organizing all the wood behind us, but this is gonna be our materials shelf for small stuff. We got some sheet steel, plate steel here, and on the back side here, we've been storing our 10, 80, and 15, and 20 steel ready for making Damascus. And that leads us to the machining area of the workshop. To the left, your right, is a bridge port with the variable speed head and a two horsepower motor. I bought this thing refurbished. It just sounds unbelievable. 3,000 RPM, barely makes a sound. To our right is a Monarch 10 EE lathe. Built in 1942, it came off a battleship. We have had some serious problems with this. Our electrician has spent a huge amount of time troubleshooting it because the variable speed wasn't working. You remember the first one of these we had, it got dropped off a loading dock, got completely totaled. We had to change V-belts on this. They were completely worn in terrible condition. It was a shock. But at last, we have a running 10 double E lathe. We turn on the generator. We turn on the spindle. We even have coolant running and ready. We can get that speed cranking all the way up. Not quite to the 2500, but to 2250 RPM. This is a tool room lathe that is ready to do some beautiful work. There's still a little more we need to do to it. Still some electrics that have got to be worked out. Frankly, I feel a little bit bitter that we've had to put so much time and thought into it. But this is going to be a beautiful machine to use. I can't wait for the first project with it. Stay tuned for that. As Scott demonstrated, our toolboxes are now beautifully set up. Everything has its place. Every tool has a place. And in every place is the tool that should go there. It is extremely exciting. Well, this shelf here is serving very much as the camera operations base. We're keeping our tripods, our sliders, our cameras over here, our lenses, and our batteries ready to be used. Lots of you guys are curious. We use Panasonic GH5 and GH4 cameras. Uh, it's a micro four thirds system. I really like working with it. As we come over to our handwork, section. We'll see a wild will in his natural habitat willing away on some willing things. We have our toolbox here set up for kind of the generic hand tools that we're using on a regular basis. Files occupy almost all of this, but almost all of our toolboxes in the top left here 
have a measuring and marking drawer. The white box, the blue box, the red box, the green box all has a set of calipers, sharpies, calculators, a square ready so that we can always measure something, we can always calculate something, and we've always got those very needed tools on hand. We have been investing time and effort in storage, and I'm thrilled that these boxes still have empty space, because as the number of tools increase, we're gonna need to find place to store it. Anyway, this is the toolbox that I've been using uh, that is now mostly engraving and jewelry work, small fine work toolbox, and I'm thrilled to say, Plenty of open space, of course. Over here, we have our microscope. Now this is a microscope, this is actually a trinocular. So it's not a binocular microscope, it's a trinocular microscope because there are two tubes here for looking down and then one tube here that we have a Panasonic GH4 camera connected to so that we can film the footage from the microscope. To the bottom of the bench, we have my micromotor um, control unit here. I keep the handpiece at the top of the bench we also have the control unit for the air graver, which is able to be palm controlled or foot pedal controlled. The air graver unit also powers via compressed air my little turbine handpiece, the 320,000 RPM one. We still have to work out a solution for our buffing because the buffer is now under the bench and just makes a mess when you buff and it's very dangerous. But that is all gonna come soon, of course. My spacesuit has finally found a home. I have my grinding helmet, I have my welding helmet, and I have the pack right here ready to be used when I am going in to the grinding room. This is exciting. This is a beautiful belt grinder made by 84 Engineering. It is just such a versatile piece of equipment that we've been loving using. It's powered by a two horsepower motor, which is just a little step up from this beautiful two by 48 inch belt grinder, which I still absolutely love, which uh, I brought over from the UK. You see our belt organization, Will's done a fantastic job building this uh, little belt organization system. And we probably need to add more hooks to it because we just have so many belts and it's still quite difficult to keep track of them. Now this piece of equipment is new. You probably haven't seen it yet. This is a disc sander with a variable frequency drive. And why do we have a disc sander? Well, platen here that's actually spinning. It's very flat. It allows us to make things much flatter than we could ever make with a grinding belt. That's what the disc sander is for. Coming to this side of the workshop, this is where we do kind of the angle grinding, the really, really messy kind of grinding work. We have grinding discs up on the wall and we have the same angle grinder rack that I had back in my workshop in Norfolk, in the United Kingdom, hung up on the wall here, housing all these angle grinders with sockets ready to use them. So let's go upstairs. Now you've not seen any of this, but this is storage, organization. Our administrative assistant has done a phenomenal job of organizing all of this. We have boxes of all the different things. This is part of the challenge of trying to have a business that has multiple people is, I just can't know where everything is. I can't keep that in my head. That's gotta be clear, organized, so that anybody can come upstairs and go, oh, hmm, I need uh, three MP100 filters for a half mask. Well, would you look at that? Organized, more like professionalized. I shouldn't be allowed to make terrible jokes like that. Across the way there, you see that mezzanine space above the office and toilet? We don't have stairs there yet, but we have the wood for it. We're gonna be building those stairs soon, so we have more storage space and more usable working space. And speaking of the office, it looks a whole lot different than you last saw it. Of course, we've got a whiteboard for project planning. We've got mirrors, microwave, coffee stuff, printers. We have a desk here in the middle of the room, which has just been fantastic for collaborating and the back and forths. On the wall, we have some beautiful art. We have Will's Forge or Die poster, a painting Jeff Fader made me, the YouTube awards, of course, as well as more awesome things like this little felt me and swords. We've got swords and knives just everywhere. And since you're probably also curious, how is the, uh, how's the truck doing? It's been fine. This, it's, it's really just been completely fine. I haven't had any further issues with it. Oh, there's some weird noises when it turns on, but you know, it's probably normal, right? Let's go back inside because I want to round out the video by just thanking you so, so much. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for buying the merchandise. Thank you guys for supporting our sponsors. Thank you for helping us make this all happen. This is just a hell of a lot of fun. It's a huge challenge, but a pleasure to bring you along with this journey. Thank you for watching these last three months here in the US. I'm gonna see you very soon on the next episode. Pleasure as always, bye-bye.